Okay, so that's single sign-on. Hopefully that was helpful. I think we'll move straight into Azure Information Protection. And we're going to be focusing specifically on how we protect documents um, with Azure Information Protection labeling. So what's the problem again? What we've actually got? What's the scenario which is um, what, what we're trying to solve with this product? And that scenario is the very typical sort of scenario we've got where we store documents in our environment, either in SharePoint or on file servers, and we protect those documents typically by configuring permissions to say these users can get into this folder, those users can get into that SharePoint site, and we basically configure protection at the storage level. However, what that doesn't help us with is when somebody opens that document, saves it either on their own machine or sends it to someone outside the organization, we've pretty much lost our control over that, over that document once it's left our organization. And what we're going to be looking at is how Azure Information Protection embeds protection into the document itself and not just at the storage. So it'll encrypt the document, we'll send the document out to um, an external party, for example, or even someone internal business. But regardless of what they do with that sort of document, is we we'll, they they won't actually they'll only be able to do what we want them to be able to do with it. So if we say that they can un, they can edit the document, but they can't print or they can't forward it on to somebody else, or only people within a particular customer's domain name can access it, then if they pass it to somebody else, doesn't matter what method they use, USB drive, email, whichever it is. Um, it won't matter because the protection is applied at the document level. So we're protecting the document no matter where it actually ends up. It's much easier to sort of explain this, I think, if we actually go into the labels and look at this in the portal. So to if you want to access this, the way you go about it is going to the Office 365 Security Compliance Center. And you want to be looking at the classification section on the left hand side. And you can see you've got the sensitivity labels. If you select that, we've got one set up there for the webinar. Uh, like a test label and I'm just going to talk you through this so you can see really the capabilities of what we can do. So the way this work, this product works is in Microsoft Office. When we create a document, we basically will have an option to apply what's known as a label to that document. And this is where we create the label and the label will basically define what protection is going to be applied to that document. So on this screen here, we just configure the description. Um, which is it's just basically just to tell people what on, on that first screen there. Sorry, we just basically to tell people basically a brief overview of what that um, what that particular label would do. You know, so imagine giving a point that say people internal only can access it or these customers can access it, that sort of thing. It's purely informational. It won't affect the technical deployment at all. But on the scope section, this is where we sort of get into actually what we're we going to start doing with the policy. Again, we are sort of scoping our own sort of demonstration here around particularly files and emails. So therefore, that's what we selected. We're just going to select files and emails and. What do we want to do with those? So one thing on bear in mind is two things what we can do with labels and documentation. Is we can encrypt them, which we've spoken about briefly, which is the ability to enforce protection on the document and say who can and can't do certain things with it. But also we can actually apply um, content to to documents. So if a content's got a confidential or a highly confidential label, we can click this box here and we can actually define um, headers, custom headers for us. So you might have to put some legal information at the bottom of, of a document that's got a confidential label that says um, if you're an unintended recipient, you're not authorized to view this document, whatever that word is, that's right for your organization. We can guarantee it's applied basically into the document by using labeling. So any document that label will get that. We can add watermarks across the document to say confidential, whatever that is. But the key is it's all done at the label level. You're not relying on the users to make these decisions to do it themselves. OK, so that's the sort of encryption and the actual custom headers and the, the marking of documents. Now, this is the probably the fundamental piece really is the actual encryption options. So on this screen here, this is where we basically say we select that we want to obviously have some encryption on the document. We might not. We might actually want to not enable any, any encryption, just do some watermarking on the document, which is fine. You just select that top option there to remove encryption if the file is encrypted. Um, and then what we do here is we typically though you're using this product to help protect your data. So this is where you'd probably use the product more so in the actual configure encryption settings. So let's just talk through these settings. First of all, we've got the do we want to actually assign the permissions now or do we want to use decide? So we can actually 
define the permissions ourselves in here and who can access the document, what they can do with it, or we can actually prompt the user to basically apply their custom permissions. So if they're always sending documents to different people, but they want to be able to protect them themselves, we can give them that ability when, a, when they actually save a document and label it, it'll pop up and say, right, what permission do you want to apply to this document? And they can choose it themselves. But in this case, we're actually going to tell the label to apply a specific type of permission to a document. Um, so we've that that's sort of the how we say we want the label to assign the permissions. The next part we've got the user access to content. So what we can do here is we can say that if a particular label is applied to a document, we want that content to expire after seven days or 30 days, for example. And what will happen basically then is if somebody tries to access that document after that sort of time frame outside the organization or internally, depending on how the policy is scoped, then they just won't be able to access the document. It'll completely just encrypt the document, won't let them in it, regardless of where it is, what device it's on, where they've sent it to, it'll just stop them accessing it. And also we've got the ability to allow offline access as well, which is more of like a pragmatic, it's a very pragmatic sort of option that because what we've got to bear in mind is the way that Azure applies this encryption is by checking someone's identity when they open a document. But if somebody's traveling and they haven't got an internet connection, for example, then we might still want them to be able to access a particular document with this label. Um, so we can configure the allow offline access, but we can provide allow it only for a certain period of time if we want to. So we can say you can access it for seven days offline, but then if you want to continue accessing it, you have to check in and make sure you still actually have permission to access that document. So that's sort of how it deals with that sort of scenario as well. But yeah, right now we're going to get to the, the sort of key part of the demo of this particular demonstration, this particular screen, which is the configuring of the permissions. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to configure an external organization, which is actually happens to be one of our customers that we've got permission to use their um, their environment for, which is the nwhgroup.co.uk uh, domain. And basically what we're going to say is anyone from that organization can have access to documents with this label, but only with specific permissions. So we can specify in here custom permissions, the couple of templates views that drop down as well that we can use. But we're going to say basically in here, we're going to go back to custom. So one sec. So what we're going to basically say in these policies is that someone can only what they, what they can do is they can actually they can't print our document when we send it and I'll show you how it looks from the user side. We we'll see anyone from NWH group can't print our documents. Uh, they can't sort of send it to anybody else. And crucially as well, they can't actually copy data and extract data out of the document and copy it and paste it into another document. But we are going to allow them to collaborate, edit the document, work on it um, and possibly send it back to us. So we still allow ourselves to collaborate with our sort of um, suppliers and customers. But what we're not allowing them to do is to actually extract information from our documents and, um, and 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 place it elsewhere where it might be at risk. So that's where we'd set the actual permissions and the settings for who can access it and what they can do with it. This is a really interesting and useful feature because it takes the uh, decision making out of the user's hands and this is auto labeling. And what we can do here is we actually set criteria for this particular label. Um, so we might say, I don't know, personal information, for example, it might be, an, it might be a label called personal information and we can basically get the system to recognize certain types of structured information in documents and apply the label automatically. And it's got a lot of sensitive information types built in, which Microsoft are aware of. So we can take a look at those here. So you can see all of these sort of different secu social security numbers, passport. Um, once we get down to the UK, you'll see what we've got here now. So you can see there, for example, what we can say is if a document has a, a, a driving license, driver's license number in it, if it has a national insurance number in it, if it has a passport number in it, um, apply this particular label and therefore that label might have the protection, the encryption that we spoke about previously assigned to it. So yeah, that's a really useful feature. Also, you can sort of create custom content types. So if you've got particular types in your, you might have account numbers, that sort of so you can create custom structures um, in here and patterns that it'll recognize and apply labels to. And you can also just apply a message at the bottom there. It won't affect anything technically, but it will just inform the user to say, uh, we've recognized this information in the document, we're going to apply this label automatically.
what we do now is I just want to show you very quickly how it looks from a user's side who actually creates the document and how they apply a label or document. But also then we're going to look at how someone how, how, how someone opens the document on the other end. So as NWH group, UK user in this scenario, sent from a Circle Cloud user, how they would access it, but also how it would look for someone who hasn't got access to it and how it would prevent them accessing the document. So very quickly, this is a very short demo here. Um, I've created the document. I want to apply the sensitivity label to it. I'm going to apply the webinar test label, which we've just created there, as you've seen. And now that document, now I've, I've applied the label, I've saved it. That document now has got that encryption embedded into it. So if I send it out, it's going to carry that encryption anywhere with the document. And this here, what you can see now is the this is basically the user end, the recipient end. So I've now logged in as an email address with my own name, thomas.robert at nwhgroup.co.uk. And as we know from creating the policy, that policy allowed nwhgroup.co.uk users certain permissions on documents. So I've sent that document over from my Circle Cloud account, as you can see on the screen there, uh, to my nwhgroup.co.uk account. And I've then previously, just to save time, I've already saved the document to the desktop. And I'll show you how that looks once it opens up. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to open up the document. And what you'll notice here, first of all, is obviously that information where we tell the person a little bit about that label, what that label's for, is even if they're outside the organisation, because all of this is embedded in the document, it tells them that it's got a label applied to this document. And we could also put a little bit of narrative in there just to say why or what we want them to do, what we don't want them to do the document, just to give them that extra sort of prompt or bit of information at that point. Um, but also we can actually go in here and just view the permissions that we've configured. So you can see there what we've done is we basically said, um, yep, yeah, some of the NWH group at Code UK users can view the document, they, they can edit it but they can't copy data out of it and they can't actually print. Get so, so it allows us to stop people taking hard copy prints of our documents, which obviously then potentially puts them at risk. You know, it just, it just reduces that risk factor for us. But at the same time, we want NWH Group to call UK to be able to collaborate, collaborate with us. We want them to be able to modify our documents so we can work together productively, but we just also want to have a little bit extra control to just reduce any risks. So as you can see there, I just went into file, went into print, you can see the print options completely disabled. I, will, I won't be able to print this at all from here. And also what you'll see is when I try and copy some text, the clipboard is completely disabled, so I won't be able to copy that text and paste it into another document. Obviously, imagine if you've got an Excel sheet with lots of adding up account information, customer information, personal information in there. This feature would be incredibly useful just so you can send things to other people and other parties with real confidence that they can't either intentionally or unintentionally copy that data and potentially put out risk. So you can see as well, despite the restrictions, we can still allow the end user to edit the documents as well. So that's the recipient, a recipient that we want, like an authorised recipient. What does it look like if you are a, a user who we don't want to have access. So if you're basically not an NWH group, UK user or a sort of cloud user in this scenario. So imagine this document being either saved to a USB drive, passed to somebody else who's outside of the organization, outside of NWH group, UK, and they go in and they try and open that same document. This is exactly the same file. What will happen? So they've opened the document as normal, but you'll see straight away they've been prompted to say, actually, this is a document that's got protection. So we want to make sure we know who you are before we decide whether you can access it. And if you can access it, what permission level we want to give you access to it with. So unless you put in a sort of cloud UK credential or NWH group UK credential in here, then you won't have any access to that document at all. So that's the end user experience if you haven't got access to the document.